Welcome, everybody. We're so glad you're here for another top-rated seller webinar. These, uh, the webinar today is Shipping Internationally, Best Practices to Get Your Orders Overseas. And today we have three presenters. We have Jason Smith and Brian Goodman, both from Thrifting with the Boys and their new Facebook group, Shipping with the Boys. We also have Eric Nash from Stamps.com giving us our presentation today. Everybody wants to know if we're recording this. Yes, the webinar is being recorded. We'll get that up on YouTube, hopefully within 24 hours, and you will get a link to the recording if you've registered for this webinar. Uh, the presentation slides will also be available on the page at pagemage.com forward slash TRSW. If you're having audio problems, sometimes it just doesn't work, please try hanging up on your computer and calling in with your phone. You will get a PIN number to connect, and sometimes that's the best sound there is. Stay connected with top rated seller webinars. We don't want to lose track of you. Please be sure you've signed up for our newsletter at pagemage.com top rated seller webinars. In those newsletters, you'll get all the webinar info, selling tips and advice, and you'll get the links to watch all the past recordings. We've got a whole library of great recordings for you to see. So sign up today. Stay connected again on Facebook. We have over 1,050 sellers in our Facebook group. We're very proud of that. It's a very active group, and we invite you to join us at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash TRS webinars. Our sponsors, these webinars are always brought to you completely free, no charge at all, by the wonderful sponsors, eBay Radio, where you've got the griff every Tuesday and Thursday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. PT. Check that out at ebayradio.com. And Cabbage, everybody needs a little cabbage to grow their business. You can get money in your account within seven minutes. Check out cabbage.com. Outright, remember to go to Outright for all of your accounting needs. Put your accounting on autopilot. Outright has a new name now, GoDaddy Online Bookkeeping. So check it out, free version and a paid version to help you prepare for taxes. Outright.com will still get you the information you need. And Terapeak.com, where eBay sellers make more money on every eBay sale. Check out Terapeak.com. Top rated seller webinars are also brought to you by PageMage. Social Beacon from PageMage helps you easily promote your products across Pinterest, Facebook, and Twitter. Measure your selling to learn what works and take the mystery out of social selling with our guidance. PageMage needs beta testers. Go to socialbeacon.com and sign up. And last but not least, stamps.com, where you can import your orders from multiple marketplaces and print out your postage from home. Stamps.com offers a free program for all eBay sellers. Oh, don't forget, we've got another webinar coming up. OMG, it's October and I'm not ready for the holidays. This is by Lisa Satora and we'll be having this webinar on Wednesday, October 23rd at 10 o'clock Pacific time. You can sign up now at pagemage.com forward slash top rated seller webinars. Don't miss it. And of course we have our connectors, me, Kat Simpson of thatcat.com and Karen, Karen Locker of Solutions for E-Commerce. All of us are grateful that you're here and happy to help you further your education in e-commerce. Back to Shipping Internationally, best practices to get your orders overseas. Eric, are you ready to take it away? All right, Kat, I think I am, and thanks for the intro here. Always a great job. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Eric Nash, and I work for Stamps.com. I'll be presenting today with uh, Jason Smith and Brian Goodman of Thrifting with the Boys. I'm sure many of you have heard Jason or Brian speak on eBay radio or you've seen them present to standing room only audiences at the eBay on location events or other e-commerce events. They both have been selling on eBay for, uh, for over 12 years and uh, most of their products are, are coming from, uh, they find and, and uh, come from thrift stores. So they bring a wealth of selling knowledge and we're really excited to have them present with us today. Uh, welcome Jason and Brian, say hello if you're there. Hello, we're here. We're here. <laughs> <laughs> Just All to let right. everybody know, we are not in the same room. So if we talk over each other, we're not doing it on purpose. <laughs> yes, we are. Yes, we are. Um, screw you, Brian. 
<laughs> <laughs> well, nice guys. We're uh, we're happy you're here, and we're looking forward to your presentation. Let's uh, let's quickly uh, go over the topics we're going to discuss today. We'll start with the international e-commerce market, and we'll talk about why every eBay seller should be uh, opening up their listings to international buyers today, basically. Um, then we'll discuss the different shipping carrier options you have from FedEx, uh, UPS, and the U.S. Postal Service. Um, and then we'll also talk about eBay's global shipping program. We'll also discuss uh, customs documents, duties and taxes, and strategies to, to ship into problem countries. Uh, and then we'll chat about package tracking and insurance. And then uh, Jason and Brian will show you some real examples of products they've sold recently um, to the international markets and, and kind of describe how they did it. And lastly, we'll have a QA at the very end. Um, and just a reminder, if you have any questions, um, please type them in the question box and uh, we'll get them answered at the end. All right, let's, uh, let's quickly talk about the international e-commerce market. Um, there are over 1 billion buyers worldwide, and, uh, and e-commerce sales are expected to be over $1 trillion in 2013. It's a huge opportunity, and it's only going to get bigger here as the years go by. Um, the image on the screen here uh, shows that the U.S. market really has only 15% of the total online buyers in the world. So it's a, a very small little chunk of, uh, of the pie. Um, and if you're only limiting your sales to the U.S., you're basically only hitting 15% of the world's buyers. Um, and, and so you're missing out on some easy sales. Uh, international buyers, uh, they want to buy U.S. products, fortunately. And, and buying directly from us or from the source is usually going to be a lot cheaper than buying from a retailer uh, in their own country. Um, and, and sales growth is expected to grow faster outside of the U.S. here in the coming years. Uh, as an example, China's online uh, sales are expected to grow by 51% here in 2014, while the uh, U.S.'s are only expected to grow uh, by 12%. And so, so Brian and Jason, um, you know, what do you suggest to buyers when you're looking at, uh, uh, at the international market and, and how they should be participating in this? Well, one of the things that I like to uh, always tell people, and I think this, when they hear it this way, it kind of hits home or it hits them, that they like, wow, maybe I'm leaving money on the table. You're not selling internationally. <clears throat> You're ignoring a lot of potential customers. There are 7.1 billion people on the planet, and about 330 million are only in, in the United States. So what kind of business model do you have that you're going to ignore uh, 6.7 billion people? That's a terrible business model. Uh, Brian and I have always shipped internationally from day one. Back when we had to wait in line at the post office, fill out the forms. It sucked back then. It is super easy nowadays. So don't ignore all those customers that are wanting to give you money. It's it's just a bad business practice. And, and I've been chipping since I was 12 years old. <laughs> and uh, so I, it's been a long time. Uh, I don't remember exactly the first time I shipped internationally, but I do know it was roughly 30 years ago that I can remember a specific item that I shipped. It was a big cardboard stand-up of Michael Jackson that <laughs> somebody in England bought from me. And it cost about 100 bucks to ship it, and they were thrilled with it. And this was before eBay. So people have been selling internationally for years. Um, wh one thing uh, that you got to think about is that there are buyers all over the world who want products that they can't get locally that may seem common to us. For example, just this morning, um, I sold a pair of socks, Boston Red Sox socks. They're in the, uh, the playoffs, and, and uh, I sold a pair of socks to somebody in Sweden who paid a fortune to ship them. I mean, I actually made a little bit of money. I, I mean, I didn't expect anybody to buy them outside the country, but people do all the time. You'd be amazed at what things look uh, ordinary to us, and you, uh, you can sell overseas. And here's the real thing where eBay sellers especially have an edge where you're able to display products worldwide and if you're selling stuff to other people in other countries and your competition isn't, who do you think is going to make extra money and, and get that extra business? 
It's a great point, Brian and uh, and Jason. I mean, it's, I think you know, like you said, they have money and they want our products, and they're looking forward to giving it to someone. So it's uh, might as well jump in that game and, and, and get that easy money. All right, uh, um, let's uh, let's let's see. Let's talk about some of the different ways you can sell and ship internationally. Um, you know, one one point one to bring up. Uh, right here, right out of the gate, getting started is uh, is that you could start selling into the main English-speaking countries, such as Canada, the UK, and Australia, um, if you're just looking to get started. Um, along with the U.S., these countries represent 44% of the entire international e-commerce market. Um, and so, and communicating with these buyers is is uh, easy since these are all English-speaking um, languages or countries. Um, and so, and also. All these countries have good internet coverage, so they're able to see your products. They've got um, good postal infrastructures already established. They take credit cards, and they usually have a PayPal account. So it's a great opportunity for you to kind of get started, put your toe in the water into a big uh, pool, really, and, uh, and, and kind of get started pretty easily. So we always like to suggest people to do this. You know, Brian and Jason, I don't know, have you, you know, I'm sure you probably you see the stats here on the screen and, and can see how big of a market the English-speaking countries are, uh, obviously including the U.S. Uh, how, you know, what percentage of your sales are going to, like, Australia, Canada, and the U.K.? I don't, I don't know if percentage go, go ahead, Brian. Go ahead. <laughs> I don't know if percentage going to those specifically, but this morning I did all my shipping and 20% uh, of my packages were going international as were yesterday. And um, yeah, I, you know, we're going to hopefully get you to want to sell to anybody anywhere in the world by the end of this presentation. But if you're still afraid, it's a great suggestion to just baby step it into those countries that if there were to be communication between you and the buyer, it'll be very easy because we all speak English. So start with those. But Australia is huge. They've got money, they've got internet access, and they don't have a lot of stuff. Australia is just a big, vast wasteland of nothingness in the middle, and there's not industry like we have, and they want our stuff. And I would say, of my internet, uh, of my international packages, I would say a good quarter go just to Australia. And you you got to stop and think that uh, with the advances that eBay has made and PayPal has made in, in, in sort of uh, cutting down on a lot of fraud, yeah, you may have some problems here and there, but they've, they've really been minimized in recent years as compared to years ago when a lot of, uh, you, you might have seen some fraudulent orders come in from other countries. I ship everywhere, and the problems I have shipping to China, Russia, wherever, are so minimal. But I think that if you're somebody new getting into shipping internationally, you got to stop and, and think things out logically. Number one, am I shipping, you know, 800 hour items to, you know, faraway places that, uh, you know, nobody's ever heard of? Maybe that's a red flag. But if I'm shipping a $25 shirt to a country that's, you know, maybe small or not that well known, I, I don't give it a second thought. I just go ahead and do it. All the information you need to ship to those other countries comes right with your order. So I think you just got to use some common sense and realize, do, am I shipping high theft items, um, you know, high you know, electronics, what have you, or just commonplace items. So it really depends uh, on what you're selling. Uh, you, your confidence should build based on the, uh, the type of item you're selling and on the dollar amount of the item you're selling. Great points. Um, okay, let me quickly go over some of uh, how, you know, once a seller sells a product to an international buyer, I wanted to, uh, to kind of discuss quickly how, the, how you get a package to them. Uh, on the screen here, you see a two-pound package going from L.A. to London, England, um, and kind of describe the differences between UPS, FedEx, and the U.S. Postal Service. Um, if you ship uh, with UPS or FedEx, you can see on the screen that they basically are going to take that product um, from the U.S., get over to customs, and then they're going to also deliver it to the end user, the buyer. So it's, you're only dealing with one carrier. So it's a, it's a very nice route to go. Um, but if you're shipping with the U.S. Postal Service, they will ship the product out of the U.S. and into the host country. And then from there, once it clears customs, the local postal agency, and in this case, the U.K.'s Royal Mail, will handle the second leg of the journey and deliver the package to the buyer. 
So this is a big difference between the uh, UPS and FedEx and the, the Postal Service when shipping internationally. Um, but as you can see on the screen here and the prices, the, uh, the pricing options are much different with FedEx and UPS compared to the Postal Service for international packages. Um, the U.S. Postal Service is by far the low-cost leader uh, in shipping overseas. Um, and if you're shipping low-cost items, you know, T-shirts, things like that that are like in the $15 to $20 range, um, the USPS has a great mail class called First Class Package International Service, and it's really, really cheap, and it basically allows you to avoid having to sell a $20, $25 item and pay $50 to ship it. Um, that's kind of backwards, obviously. And so by using this low class uh, or this uh, lower mail class, um, you get the opportunity to, to really save on shipping. And if you, in the event you need to get that package over there quicker, um, you can always upgrade to Priority Mail International, and you can see the price differences here. Priority Mail International is $43.10 versus FedEx and UPS for the same exact package at 180 plus. So there's you know quite a bit of uh, cost savings there. You know Brian and Jason, do you guys? Uh, I mean, you predominantly only use the USPS. Do you ever use FedEx or UPS for your international shipments? I've only used USPS. Uh, most of my items are typically four pounds and under, with majority of them being in the one to two pound range. And uh, yeah, I've had some big ticket items, uh, uh, but for the most part, you know. They're the twenty to hundred dollar range, and and so I don't I don't fear it, and I don't worry about it, and it's you know, it's all worked out. Uh, you know, I I think I've lost more per year. I've lost more things in the U.S. than my international sales, in terms of the package just didn't show up. So, um, I I'm happy with USPS, and I'm gonna stick with them. Couple couple of things. Uh, for many years, people who have uh, sellers who have shipped internationally have said, okay, I'll do it, but I'll only do it express mail. And they'll ship a $10 item and offer it up, uh, you know, e express mail at like $50, $60, $70. <laughs> I mean, it's a little nutty. And uh, what that ultimately does is turn it turned off buyers in these other countries because shipping the items was so outrageous. Now with First Class International being so prevalent, uh, I ship most of my first class international cost around 12, 13 bucks or so, typically for, uh, I don't know, 8 to 12 ounces, you know, under a pound. The other thing is when you look at that price for Priority Mail International, there's a great way to get that price down even further, and that's to use the flat rate envelopes. Uh, right now it's about 24 bucks when you do it online with. Uh, either a flat rate letter size, a flat rate legal size, or a, a flat rate priority padded envelope. Doesn't mean these items have to be flat, it's just that the rate is flat at about 24 bucks. It's a great way to ship things, and uh, uh, that's something that uh, I've used more and more when I've got something that's a little more pricey or uh, weighs where the weight is comparable on first class, where it's close to what it might be for priority, flat rate, I might just upgrade it and the customer gets it maybe a little quicker. But uh, uh, most of the packages get there real quick. No doubt there. And they're trying to, the really, USPS is really trying to improve first class international. I, I know you, you mentioned, uh, um, you know, you predominantly use that, Brian, and, and we'll kind of get into a little later, but they have added tracking to that. So we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later here. Um, let's, uh, let's, you know, while today's focus is kind of on showing how easy it is to ship internationally, I, I did want to bring up eBay's global shipping program. Um, for those of you who are unfamiliar with this program, it's, it started about a year back, and it allows you to sell internationally, uh, but only requires you to ship your packages to a U.S. warehouse. Um, once that eBay receives that, that package at the warehouse, uh, which is, I believe is in Kentucky, they then fill all the necessary customs forms and ship your package uh, to the international buyer, usually getting it to them pretty quickly. Um, so you basically get the benefits of the international market, but only have to deal with domestic shipping. You know, if you're scared of international shipping, this could be a great opportunity for you to kind of get started. Um, but hopefully in today's webinar, we'll show you how easy it is to, to ship overseas and you'll want to do it by yourself. 
And then, of course, one negative aspect about the Global Shipping Program is that they show all the landing costs to the international buyer. Landing costs are, are basically the uh, international shipping uh, costs, uh, uh, customs and import fees, plus a brokerage fee that eBay charges um, you know, for the, the, to handle this process for you. So it's possible buyers can get scared away when they start to see all these costs add up, um, including the brokerage fee that's being added uh, to the purchase. You know, Brian or Jason, have you guys uh, had a chance to, to try this program or look into it at all yet? Uh, neither of us use it. We both have looked into it and we know a lot about it. We feel that it's a better program when you have uh, higher priced items that you uh, you get a little more protection that way. You're, you're just shipping it domestically um, and it works really well. But if you're just selling things in the you know, I'll just pick a number, $100 or less range. Uh, it's so easy to use a program like stamps.com and print out your, your international labels in, in just really a click or two. I mean, it, it's really so swift and easy to do that I don't need that extra assurance that somebody else is going to reship it to me. The only other downside, and I think the eBay Global Shipping Program is a great program, and it, it does serve a terrific purpose. There is another downside, and that is it doesn't ship everywhere yet. Maybe one day they will, but you know they have a, uh, a finite list of places that they will ship to. So you want to take that in consideration. I, I, I feel better being able to offer my goods and services to everybody. And if, you know, if I get somebody in Pago Pago that wants to buy something from me, I'm going to sell it. And I've done that. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I, I fully mirror everything Brian just said. Uh, but for those that are afraid of um, global shipping on your own, even if you are selling low-priced items, <clears throat> this could be a good way to get into selling internationally because all you have to do is get it to Kentucky. If you can get it to Kentucky, then it's out of your hands. <clears throat> Excuse me, and eBay will take care of it from that point on. If anything happens from that point on, you're covered because eBay is taking care of it. Uh, and there's one other hidden uh, factor that I like to use the shipping myself. When I offer almost on everything, I offer free domestic shipping, which means if I'm selling a $25 item, it might cost me $3 to ship it. So when I ship internationally and charge roughly what it costs to ship internationally, I pick up that extra $3 in profit because I'm not paying that free domestic shipping. The, so it, it's a way to make a little extra money. If I'm using the global shipping program, that free shipping, I'm, I'm using that to pay for it to go to Kentucky. So, so I think that if you, if you really look into it, there are a lot of ways to uh, make some extra money just being an international shipper besides just opening up uh, your products to the world. And it's up to 36 countries and growing, and Russia is one of them, and we'll get into Russia in a bit. But uh, you, know, you, you can check out the list uh, on eBay. Uh, just look up the Global Shipping Program and eligible countries. Very cool. Okay, let's, uh, let's talk about some customs documents you need to fill out when you're shipping package overseas. Um, for the USPS, customs forms come in two sizes. Um, there's a four-page form called the Form 2976A and a one-page form called Form 2976. Choosing the right form is based on the weight and value of the package as well as the country it's being delivered to. Um, and when you print postage online using a service like stamps.com or eBay shipping, uh, the programs automatically are going to choose which uh, customs form you should use. Um, so it's it's a very simple process. And on the screen here, you can see uh, which customs forms are required by each specific mail class. Generally, um, First Class Mail International uses the one-page form, uh, which can be printed on a 4 by 6 label and attached to your package. Uh, and for packages shipped with, uh, with Priority Mail, generally you're going to use the longer four-page form, um, uh, which is placed in an envelope and attached to the package. Um, uh, let's see. Before you go, go on, Eric, just yeah. one quick thing. That envelope, by the way, is a clear envelope. Uh, that you can get for free from the post office when you go in there, or you can have it shipped to you from USPS.com. 
but it's the uh, the envelope is called P, the P PS form 2976-E as in Edward. So that's a it's a clear Army envelope. An envelope. That it's it's really just a clear plastic thing that you're able to put those forms in. And just one other tip that I give to you when you use the long form, I also put the addresses on the box itself so that if for any reason this envelope or the sheets that are inside it get misplaced or separated, you still have the from and to on the box itself. So it's got a, you know, a little extra protection to get it to a customer. That's a great point, Brian. Uh, especially in, you know, vent, envelopes can get ripped off or even a label. So that's a, that's a great, uh, great tip there. Well, on the screen here, we've got a, an example of the one page form. I've highlighted the areas in blue that are of interest here, and that's uh, in the top right area, you see the, uh, the return and delivery address. You also see the signature, uh, the date, and the electronic round stamp here at the bottom. Um, these are all items that are inserted automatically when you use an online postage vendor, like uh, Stamps.com or eBay shipping or PayPal shipping or whatever. Um, the electronic round stamp, by the way, is important because that that's what basically allows you to avoid having to go to the post office. You can just basically take your international package and, and hand it to your daily mail carrier um, or take it to the post office and drop it off at the, uh, on the desk. Um, so overall, the process is very simple. The area here in yellow is where you need to add some items to your customs form. It's basically the, the customs wants to know what's inside the package. Um, kind of gives them the ability to know if they need to add a tax or a duty. Um, and then also make sure it's not a restricted product. Um, so this can be um, inserted automatically. Some of uh, the postage software have uh, favorites if you're selling one particular item. Also, eBay can take the uh, the product description and insert it here as well. Now, Brian and Jason, I know you guys have a strategy because, I mean, there's obviously a lot of things that you can put on here that might get um, raise a red flag for theft. I know you have a strategy when it comes to describing contents in your customs forms. Yeah, so two things I want to point out on this, and, and one of them is a little bit of a downfall on eBay's part, I feel, where it says uh, signature and date automatically include with online postage. Yes, that works on stamps.com and Amazon, but for whatever reason, it doesn't on eBay. So if you're printing your stuff through eBay, don't forget to sign it and date it. I've asked them repeatedly to make it automatic, like everybody else seems to. I'm not sure what their reservation is for not doing it. So if you're doing it through eBay, make sure you sign it. In terms of what's in the package, our titles are 80 characters, and uh, and I've never had a problem with this. I don't feel that that title needs to be what's in our package. Um, it, it can be just fairly generic, uh, shirt, hooded sweatshirt, pants. You don't need to see it's the Iron Maiden Killers 1982 Tour t-shirt. You can just boil it down to t-shirt. Because some of those keywords that we have for how we sell it, might trigger like, oops, I'm going to pull this out and look at it. Uh, killers, Iron Maiden, things like that. Great point. Great point. Um, okay, let's uh, let's talk about some uh, other topics you should be aware of when you're shipping to international locations. Um, customs fees are costs that the host country charges to manage the flow of goods kind of in and out of that particular country. Um, there is a fee, obviously. There's a service that kind of uh, manages this whole process. So, um, there, there's obviously customs fees. Duties and tariffs are kind of like a tax a country places on a specific product. They're built to protect the local uh, industry and businesses. Um, we also have them here in the U.S. when, uh, when products are coming inside the U.S. Uh, sometimes a tariff or a duty is placed. Um, and then taxes are not necessarily charged by every country, um, but there are extra fees sometimes that a local government would charge, such as a, a particular province in the country or a state in the country. As an eBay seller, all of these fees are, are, are the responsibility of the buyer, um, but it's a good idea to understand the process. And as we mentioned, the Global Shipping Program does show all these fees to the particular buyer, um, but if you're not using that, you're, your buyer's not going to necessarily see them all. Um, and it, it, one interesting point is if a buyer doesn't pay the fees, say, say they get the product in customs and they see um, you know, some big fees, those products are usually just destroyed um, and are rarely ever sent back. It would depend on the mail class that was used. Uh, Express Mail, for example, or Priority Mail Express, does get the uh, opportunity to have the package sent back to you. Uh, but anyway, some interesting stuff there. Here's some other uh, some other international documents that that might be interesting here. International transaction numbers. These are really only required if your product is over $2,500 in value. 
You can get your ITN number. Um, uh, you go into the U.S. Census site here, which is at aasdirect.gov. Um, and then harmonized codes are another important issue. These are kind of a standardized set of numbers developed by the uh, World Customs Organization. They're, they basically were developed by, uh, for commercial shippers to, to get their products through customs quicker. Um, you know, you can it definitely can speed it up if you include it. There's spots on each customs form for the USPS to include the harmonized code. Um, you can find your, you know, if you're shipping a particular product uh, overseas, you can find it just by going to a website, just do a Google search for harmonized codes, and you kind of input all your information. They'll kind of take what the product was made out of um, and what it goes down to, and it kind of just breaks it down, and you can include that onto the uh, the codes here. Let me jump over, um, run a little tight in time, so I'm going to jump over some problem countries here. Uh, you know, shipping to problem countries is a big issue. Um, and you know a lot of a lot of people get scared. So I know Brian and Jason, you you obviously ship to a ton of different countries. You mentioned you kind of ship to everywhere. How do you deal with uh, with problem countries? Well, you just uh, drop it in the mailbox and let it fly. I mean, really, the the problems are typically minimal, but sometimes you just have to explain to the customer when they don't have their package yet that. Um, it's probably in customs. Maybe they should check with their local postal carrier or post office. Um, you'd be amazed at how many times you say that to somebody and they come back and say, oh, yeah, I was waiting at the post office for me. Or um, or they come back to you within a few days and say, oh, got it, got it. But uh, occasionally some things just get lost in the mail, whether it's in Brazil or whether it's in uh, the U.S. One of the things is that uh, there is a uh, delivery confirmation or, or basically a tracking now that um, is going to certain problem countries like uh, uh, Brazil um, and Russia and Russia especially and and I just uh, shipped uh, something to Russia and uh, I mean I've done it a number of times recently and it goes through fine um, you know all these countries have problems that can happen but uh, for the most part um, if you package things well, if you label them properly, and you follow up with the questions from these people, oftentimes they just don't understand that it's sitting in customs or that, uh, uh, you know, you mail something today, they're not going to have it tomorrow. They, <laughs> you know, especially if it's somebody who's been, uh, you know, buying uh, from the UK, they're buying something from uh, Spain, and they get it very quickly or whatever. You know, they don't understand that coming from the U.S. may take a week or more. And some countries do take two or three weeks, sometimes longer. So you just want to prepare them for it and give them the information, the tracking number. And you're the, reason able to... I... Sorry, Brian. Sorry. the reason I had Eric uh, add the Congo and Ethiopia, they're not really problem shipping countries because nobody buys from those countries. But what I see a lot on people's... Um, items is these are the countries I am not shipping to and then there's this long list of countries that you know, I don't think even has a computer in Ethiopia let alone money to buy something from me so it, it just makes your listings look negative I'm not doing this I'm not doing that I have never had an, any order to the Congo to Ethiopia to any of these small third world countries or even big third world countries don't worry about it it's not gonna happen and as far as Italy Brazil and uh, Mexico <clears throat> things get lost, they don't show up. My last problem package got lost going to Los Angeles. I live three and a half hours from Los Angeles. Should I cut out California? Heck no. It happens. It's just business. You're going to lose it, whether it goes internationally or domestically. And Russia, their only problem is long delays. They woke up five years ago and said, holy cow, we have lots of money, we want a lot of stuff, and we got the internet. And where are we going to get that stuff? From all the, all the sellers in uh, the United States. So they know they're going to take a while to get to them, but they are eager to shop and they're eager to spend. Great points. Great points. Um, all right, let's talk about how package tracking works for international shipping. Uh, in, you know, in previous years, uh, most sellers who ship using the USPS probably would only see an exit scan out of the US from the International Service Center. And you can see the exit scan here on the screen in the blue box for this uh, particular priority mail package. But the USPS has been improving their scanning system over the last 18 months. Um, it still has a lot of work to do in order to catch up uh, internationally to FedEx and UPS, but it's getting a lot better and very quickly. 
Um, keep in mind, the other countries' postal service are the organizations responsible for uh, getting that delivery scan. So there's a lot of logistics involved in terms of merging different systems and scans, but um, the, and different software. But the USPS is really dedicated to improving scanning. Um, they've invested a lot of money, and this is only going to get better here. Uh, and as you can see, this particular priority mail package um, with the red square area shows a delivery scan in Israel. And if you look at this uh, at this next package here, um, back in January, uh, the USPS started offering delivery scans for first class international packages if they were traveling to Canada and only Canada. Took them a little while to kind of get this system up and working, but now it appears to be working really well. And you can see this first class international package in the red square area. It's showing an example of a first class international package being delivered. Um, which is great, and, and also just uh, this past July, they, uh, the USPS expanded tracking for First Class International to include 13 other countries, uh, including big e-commerce destinations like Great Britain or England um, and Ireland, uh, Japan, Germany, France, you can see how many there are here, um, and so it's, it's really improving for First Class Package International Service. Um, and as you can see, this is a, a package delivered uh, to France. Uh, they're showing tracking. Uh, Brian and Jason, have you guys seen uh, your first class? Uh, I mean, how's your tracking looking for first class international package? Are you seeing delivery scans now or still having issues? On, on some of them, there are delivery scans on the other end. Uh, but uh, there are still sometimes when I look at them uh, that there's no scan that it's been delivered. There may be some scans that it's in the other country, that it's out of customs, but it doesn't necessarily show delivered. I oftentimes know it's delivered because I get positive feedback. And if you go and check the scans, they're not there, and even if you check them later. So as you said, it's still a work in progress. It's not 100%, but it's so much better than it was before. Um, I mean, I remember the days where you, you didn't have any sort of tracking when you shipped first class. Um, internationally. So at least now uh, you not only have the exit scan, but there's a, it's getting better and better that you're going to get uh, the delivery scan on the other end. Yeah, and I've seen the same thing. It's it's common. You know, some packages show up um, uh, and, and it's it's going to be huge. It's going to be awesome. So I'm, I'm glad this happened and uh, it should take some of the trepidation of people who don't or are afraid to ship internationally out of the equation, really. That's right, and, and you know, Canada took a little time to kind of get rolling, and, and so now they've added 13 additional countries. So if you, if you are shipping to these countries and you're not seeing your scans, just keep in mind, it, it, they should start coming soon. It's, it's kind of USPS is syncing up with each organization, um, and, and they were seeing a lot better improvements, um, although obviously not every package, kind of like, uh, like Brian and Jason said, are, are appearing. So give it some time, and hopefully everything will be uh, will synced up real soon. All right, let's, uh, let's talk about some international insurance here. Um, you know, for small price items, uh, most sellers do self-insure. Uh, but if you're shipping a higher value product or shipping to a problem country and are nervous, you can always buy package insurance. It works the same way as domestic insurance and usually is just a little bit more expensive. Um, another secret for lost packages is called uh, the international inquiry. This is a formal procedure that the USPS requests with the other country's postal agency. Most of the world's postal agencies belong to the Global Postal Alliance. Um, and when a member country loses a package and an international inquiry has been filed, that alliance does not divvy up the money as, as good as that particular country uh, wants. So um, when this formal process has been filed, uh, it's amazing how fast that country can find your package. One caveat, though, is they have to be shipped with Priority Mail or Priority Mail Express in order to be able to fill out an international inquiry. Also, something that a lot of people don't know is Priority Mail International include international indemnity. This is kind of like a free insurance policy, um, but it's based on the weight or value of the product, whichever would be cheaper. The only kicker here, though, is that the payment is paid to the package recipient and not the seller. Um, so it's uh, it's something that uh, that you know as a seller you don't necessarily get. I'm going to move along here because we're uh, we're running tight in time. So I'm going to skip a couple slides here. You know, just real briefly, uh, USPS on their website has an international service update. 
Um, it lists all the problems that are occurring in the country and that could be delaying postage. This is actually important to look at just because it, uh, it uh, you know, things do happen. Floods, strikes, um, all kinds of different things that can, that can delay postage so, or delay package delivery. So if you're looking at this before you uh, ship a package that way or even after you've got a package in transit, it allows you to kind of alert the buyer about any potential delays. Um, so very important to see, and you can find it on the USPS uh, home uh, page. Also, product restrictions, very important. You know, um, just because we think a product's normal here, other countries may not allow those particular products to come into their country. And you want to know that before you start selling into that country and before you ship it in. You know, while it may be able to get in, squeeze through customs, if they do catch it, you, you could face some uh, some problems and, and legal problems and penalties. So. It's very important. You can see there's some odd things that aren't allowed. You know, playing cards in Germany, straw hats in Ireland, pens over five dollars in Canada. Um, so there are some strange items that are, are not allowed. All right, let's uh, let's get into um, some example listings here. Brian and Jason recently have sold some international sales, and uh, they have some good stories behind them. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hand this part over to you guys. So this is my uh, this is my set. It's a Corona Extra soft-sided cooler that I picked up off a clearance rack at Kmart. They were originally $14.99, at some point marked down to $7.49, then $3.74, and then I bought it for a dollar. And they had about six of them, and they sat around my house for six months for whatever reason. Well, I buy too much stuff, that's the reason. But anyway, uh, I finally got them listed, <clears throat> and it sold within about a week to Denmark. And I was super excited. International, they paid 15 bucks for shipping. Shipping was about twelve fifty, so I made about two dollars and fifty cents. Listed again within twenty-four hours. <clears throat> Excuse me, it sold to Sweden, so obviously the uh, Scandinavian countries cannot get their Corona Extra uh, soft-sided coolers. Uh, same price, thirty bucks plus fifteen shipping, and then listed it again. And this morning I sold one to Brazil, so obviously this was a hot item. I probably should up the price, but uh, on a dollar purchase, I'm very happy. And do I worry about any of these, including Brazil, not getting there? Nope. If it happens, it happens. I deal with it when it does. Uh, but uh, I am very happy. My $3 investment has turned into over 100 bucks. So you can't beat that. <laughs> nice. Uh, this is a uh, lens from an old camera that I bought at a yard sale. I bought the camera. I realized the camera was uh, junk. And but I was getting ready to uh, get rid of it, and I realized that this lens was actually worth some good money. Um, so I uh, put it up there, and I sold it to uh, Russia, and it actually came through for uh, first class delivery. And then I got a message from him, the, the buyer said, "Oh, I meant to, I meant to uh, do priority." So I said, fine. So I, I, I invoiced him for the extra money for priority and was able to wrap this up and do it the FOMO method, as we like to call it, <laughs> which is uh, uh, using a padded flat rate envelope. Uh, I was able to ship it for $23.95, which is what the uh, buyer paid. And uh, I actually made a little extra money because I wasn't shipping it uh, domestically. So... Uh, he got it very quickly. Um, I, I think uh, in a week's time, a little over a week's time, in Russia. And again, I know that because I get the feedback from people. Um, you don't get feedback all the time from every buyer, but a lot of uh, international buyers are quick to tell you that things are good because they're used to having to wait for things, uh, especially in Russia. Uh, for years and years and years, their culture has been to wait online, and wait, wait, wait. So when they get something from the U.S. real quick, they're appreciative. And a lot of sellers won't sell there. So it's a big opportunity to make extra money. <laughs> That's not me. So the, I'm normally not a fan of uh, human models in pictures. And if you're in our group, Thirteen with the Boys, uh, you'll see that I discussed this already. But these overalls looked kind of sad on a hanger, and they were kind of my size. They're a little tight if you see there, but uh, they went to Canada. I, I bought them for five dollars and thirty-five cents, and they went to Canada for sixty bucks, and they paid ten bucks for shipping. And uh, it was an easy sale. I didn't think twice about it, and I don't know if they bought it because they needed it or if they thought it was funny to see me in it or what. But uh, 
you find the listing and look at the back, the back's even a little bit tighter. So you'll get a good laugh at uh, at it, it, it pinching my under regions. Yeah, if you look at the listing, it says hat and beard not included. <laughs> uh, this is one of mine. These are some uh, Get Smart uh, greeting cards uh, I've had. I sold some a long time ago, and I found a few extra that I had. So I listed the pack of three of them for uh, 10 bucks and shipped it to Australia. It went very quickly. I mean, it's, there's plenty of them on eBay. Um, I'm just assuming that the other sellers didn't want to ship internationally. This got to Australia in about a week's time, and the buyer was really happy. And he paid a lot of money to, to ship it. Um, you know, these went uh, in a small package with a little cardboard packing. He was thrilled with the way they were packed. And, um, again, it was a, a way to pick up some extra money shipping these. It's awesome. Everybody loves Get Smart, too. All right. I think we're uh, we're up for some questions here. I just want to remind everybody uh, to take a look at thriftingwiththeboys.com website. Um, and, and Jason and Brian also have a new site called Shipping with the Boys. Uh, it's also a Facebook group, and it's got a ton of great advice and knowledge on shipping. Um, for domestic and international. You can ask a question. You'll get uh, feedback from a lot of different people. So it's a great place. And I think they've got a question here, and, and you can find the answer at the website. But, uh, but with that, Karen, I think, uh, Karen and Kel, I think I'll hand it back over to you for any questions here. Well, I'm feeling um, sorry for Karen because I think there's like 150 <laughs> questions already, you guys. They are eating up this topic. So I'll just so need to back I, you I up, Karen. Can I say something before we get to the questions? Sure. You can. I see all the questions too. There's tons of them, and <laughs> most of them are great, great questions. And I know we're not gonna get to all of them today. So please come over to Facebook, join us on shippingwiththeboys.com, and Bry and me and and whoever else is there, and Eric Nash will help answer any of them. We'll get to the good ones today. Not that they're not all good, but whatever we don't get to, join us over there, and we will definitely uh, help you out there. Okay. And one of the things that the overriding one of the themes that seems to be going through these questions is how to set up international on eBay. It seems like that's one of the biggest questions first. Setting up calculated, flat, how do we do any of that? So here's how I feel is the easiest way. I sell tons of products, but I do have a niche. I have T-shirts, wine shirts, coffee mugs, tiki mugs, things that all weigh approximately the same. A CD is always about four ounces. A T-shirt is always around eight. So I just do a flat fee. I've kind of figured out exactly what's going to cost to be an eight ounce package, uh, a one pound package, a two pound package, and it's right on the money 90% of the time. 5% is probably a little under, so I make a couple extra bucks, and 5% of the time it might be a little over, so I lose a couple of bucks. But in the long run, <clears throat> and I'm using hand gestures like anybody's seen me, in the long run, um, it'll work out for you. And the one thing you want to do is Canada and Mexico are different than the rest of the world. They're, che they're shipping is a little bit cheaper. So when you uh, go to figure it out, you should definitely, if nothing else, break out Canada and then the rest of the world. Because Canada's right above us, uh, our friendly neighbor to the north. And uh, the rest of the world, in, in the lower weights, the rest of the world will be one price. So you figure out an eight ounce package in Japan, it's going to be the same eight ounces to Spain. And one of the things that you want to do when you're setting it up, and I agree with Jason, if you have heavier items, then yeah, it's probably good to do calculated, but uh, it's very easy to go to the drop-down menus in the eBay uh, uh, sell your item form. When you get down to the international shipping, uh, usually the drop-down menu will say no international shipping if that's what you if you've never done it before. So you want to click on that drop-down menu, and I would typically for for lightweight items. Uh, four pounds or less, I would use the first class and figure out what it is. So, so for example, I have all my worldwide first class international for the majority of my items is set at about uh, $13.95, something like that. And usually I, my cost to ship them is between 10 11 bucks, and you know, occasionally I might go over, but not very often. So it's, it's usually well within the, the range. The other thing that I really feel is important is that you offer those buyers overseas the opportunity to upgrade to priority. 
and typically I use the flat rate priority envelopes. So it's another option for them for $23.95, as long as it will fit in the flat rate envelopes, that's an option for them, and people do uh, sometimes upgrade. And it makes you look better compared to other sellers who may be offering priority for $60 on something that can fit in a flat rate envelope for $23.95. So uh, it's really easy. You just pick those drop down menus to do it. And uh, I usually have three different ones. Uh, I set up one for the first class at $13.95, one for priority flat rate at uh, $23.95, and then one for Canada first class. Usually it's about 10 bucks. So uh, you, you make those options available for people. And uh, when they look at the site, when they look at your item, it shows them uh, the price of the item. And it shows them what it's going to cost them to do it. If you allow yourself to somehow get it up there where they can't see the price of shipping, but you ship there, it gets very confusing for them, and they ask, start asking you questions. Uh, you're not supposed to be able to do that, but I guess occasionally some, some of that uh, gets through. But just make sure you set it up with the pricing that will cover your costs and give you a little cushion. Because like we mentioned before, uh, Eric had the slide about self-insuring. You know, for every extra couple of dollars you make, think of it as the bigger picture. You sell 100 items where your shipping has made you an extra $3 a piece. That's $300 to handle the one time when somebody, you know, loses, uh, doesn't get delivery on a $25 item. You just pay them right back, and you, you, you're still way ahead of the game. So use that as a cushion. Um, but the, uh, there's a lot of different options you can do to different countries. You can exclude countries right there as well. There's a, there's a little uh, click on that you can do that. But it's very easy to set up international shipping. And the other thing is that if you're offering free shipping domestically, your buyer in Russia or wherever does not see that. So all they see is it costs them thirteen ninety five to ship it there. They don't. They're not aware of your free shipping here. That's not in their realm, unless you put it in the title or you put it in the description, which I strongly advise you don't, because that gets confusing for international buyers. So uh, it's a great way to make some extra money and ship things worldwide. Okay. Here's a question, Brian, that we talked about right before we went live. Um, what about customer service and not knowing the other person's language? That's the main reason this person doesn't ship internationally. Okay. The, the, the real thing is just like if you met the person in real life, you talk louder and slower. That's how you get it across to them, uh, answer the question. Uh, seriously, <laughs> they, they, there's really a, a, an easy way to do it. And I use Google Translate a lot. Uh, now, it's, is it perfect? No. Sometimes you've got to sit and really think about what they're asking you. You know, we, we talk about the post office. They talk about the postal service or postal care. You know, they may use different terms. And when it gets translated, it means something else. Sometimes it takes a few things back and forth. But if you're very uh, quick to ship, uh, have your pricing in there. Uh, most people understand that if they're buying something from out of the country and it's over a certain amount of money, that they're going to have to pay something for it. A lot of times they'll ask you the question, the thing they're asking you is, will you mark it as a gift? And you don't want to do that. It's not a gift. They're paying for it. Their country wants the duties or tariffs or taxes or whatever, and they're supposed to pay it, and it's not proper for you to avoid that for them. So, uh, and eBay's got your back on that, by the way. Um, if somebody does mention it in feedback that they had to pay customs fees or something, that feedback will get deleted for you. You just have to ask. Um, but it's, it's really pretty easy to communicate. And if you belong to a Facebook group like our group, if you get a question you're having trouble interpreting it or it's in another language or something, you'd be amazed at how many times we get 
people to answer something in Russian or in uh, Polish or whatever. That can be done. Um, so we, we may be able to help interpret something when you get those kind of questions. But usually you can do it yourself pretty easy. Google Translate. And, I, you know, I don't have a ton of dis uh, discussions with my customers. Of course, if there was a problem, you might. But typically, they buy, I ship, they get, they like. No big deal. Uh, like with my last problem, lost package to L.A., my last problem communicating with a customer was somebody here in the United States. They went to send me a question, and they left it as my feedback. So so just because they're foreign uh, does not mean it will be any more complicated to deal with them than if they're in the U.S. and, and they speak English. So uh, you just you just got to take that leap of faith. We have, and we are we are better sellers. We are bigger sellers for it. And you just don't you shouldn't have those worries. You can get you can step off the curb and get hit by a bus tomorrow, and it's all over. So sweating this ain't that big of a deal. Okay, let's see if I can go through some of these questions. Um, Eric, this one seems to be more for you. Um, this person uses Inkfrog with stamps for shipping and national labels. Let me f scroll through the question. Um, and the, the tracking. But when they go to stamps.com, it does not show the, I have to scroll to see the question. The, the, when they go to stamps, it doesn't show the whole long tracking. We pull our tracking from the USPS API, so it should certainly show everything the you know the exact same way as you would find on the USPS.com website. Um, I, I'm not necessarily aware of any problems with that, so maybe this might be an isolated incident where there was a, a hiccup in the API. Um, but you know, if that person wants to email me, I can certainly look it up. Um, so, and again, even with Inkfrog, Inkfrog's using our our, our API basically, so. Um, we're pulling the data in from the USPS API into the stamps.com system. Then Inkfrog is using the uh, the web services API to to pull that data in. So it should be exactly the same uh, on all three places. Um, but if it, you know if it's not, that would probably just be a, a unique situation. Um, I'm hoping this person's not seeing it all the time. Um, and if that is, that that would probably be a bigger problem. So if that person wants to email me, just email me enash at stamps.com. Again, that's enash at stamps.com, and I'll, I'll certainly look into it. Okay, so one, thanks. One other thing on, on that is that if you have the tracking number, number, just copy and paste it and put it in Google, and you just Google that number, and up, co up, up comes the uh, link to uh, check it on the USPS, and it's really quick. So you don't have to go to the USPS.com and put it in the box. Just put it in Google, hit click when it comes up, and that will give you your tracking right there. So if you're having problems reading it on eBay or Inkfrog or on Stamp, whatever, it will bring you right to the USPS site. Good point. I, I want to add a little something just about overall about the worldwide shipping and what we're talking about. It has gotten so much better than it used to be. Two years ago on July 3rd, I shipped a package to Dubai. And on July 4th, the customer wrote me and said, whoops, that was my old address. And I said, sorry, it already left. He said, no worries. You know, it was my bad. And just left it at that. On uh, August 5th, one month later, it showed back up here. It went to Dubai. It got refused because it was the wrong address. And it got back to me. So it went around the world, got back to me, contacted the, sell the buyer, got it right back to his new address. He was happy. I was happy. But it didn't get lost. It made it back. So that should be a testament to how good international shipping has gotten. Okay. Next question, and we've gotten this several times. Um, can you put out a list of what countries, and can you tell us what countries track first-class packages? I can. I definitely can. So I can. Um, there, there's 13 countries, and, and we can definitely get that list out to whoever that seller is. Um, I had it on the slide here. Yeah, I was going to say, if you can pull that slide back, because I've had that question over and over, which which of the countries, and then we can put them in the different Facebook groups, too, for people to see them. Yeah, let me see Also, oh, I've had just... several requests for the slides and, and be able to print out these great charts you made, Eric. And I just want to remind everybody that as soon as the video is rendered, we will have the video and a PDF of the slides uh, on the pagemage.com forward slash top ready seller webinars page. And so you'll be able to download the PDF and print that out. 
And while we're talking, uh, we are at the hour mark, and I don't know how much longer we'll be able to keep all these busy men on the call, and Karen and I. So just to remind you, your questions are not being ignored. Um, as Brian and Jason suggested, you're welcome to ask on their Facebook group. You're welcome to ask on the Top Rated Seller Webinars Facebook group. And uh, we will be putting together a document of all the questions and answers, and we'll upload that to the site also. So if you're interested in receiving that, please make sure you've signed up for our newsletter at pagemage.com forward slash top rate seller webinars, and you'll get a link to the video, you'll get the PDF of the slides, and you'll get the Q&A document. Just want to make sure everybody know we're not leaving anybody out. <laughs> All right. Awesome. I, I have that slide up right now, Karen. Thank you, Eric. Yep, I see it. So th this is the list. Anybody who is looking for the list of countries with the extended tracking, that's them. The only um, one that's missing here is Canada, because that was on the previous slide, but so Canada should actually be included here as well. Okay. And, and, and Russia now, too, I believe. Russia and Russia's only in the um, global shipping program. They have not added that yet to First Class International, but it's coming. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, next question, and this is this is a big one, with the pay with the PayPal's two hundred fifty dollars seller protection limit and UPS costs about four times as much. Any insight on how to ship orders over two hundred fifty dollars via USPS since signatures are not available? Um, so, well, I mean, obviously, one thing you could do is express mail. Or Priority Mail Express, excuse me. Um, so that you know, Priority Mail Express, uh, you know, it's it's delivered by um, it, it's just delivered in a different type of mail class. It's it's over there usually in three to five days. It's there's a money back guarantee. Um, I believe it is also signature confirmation as well. So I would suggest anybody that has something that's a little bit higher value and wants to to ship it, um, you know, I would highly suggest them looking at Express Mail International. Or Party Mail Express International. I'm sorry about that. They keep they changed the name here recently. And just to show you the price differences, let me just pull up that slide. You can see, I mean, here if you're, if you're selling an item that's $250, $300, you know, shipping is definitely quite a bit more. But in reality, it's only $30 more than First Class Package International Service, and it comes with a lot more um, guarantees and a much higher service level um, than First Class. So for an additional $30 on your $250 to $300 item. You uh, you get quite a bit more on on shipping, um, so I, I would suggest using Party Mail Express. Okay, um, next question: Should I wrap package things differently when selling internationally? The only thing I change is not much. Uh, sh uh, a T-shirt will go in the same uh, poly envelope to California that I'll, I'll use for France. The only time I added just a little extra protection is if I'm shipping a CD. Or if I'm shipping something uh, obviously breakable, I'll probably go just a smidge bigger box to get a little more padding in there, just to make sure if it does get crushed a little bit, there's that little bit extra space of cushioning. And with the CDs, I put a little extra cardboard in there to firm up the uh, bubble mailer I use. But for the most part, nope. Just you know, I, I feel that you know I'm giving good quality packing to my customers uh, domestically. They're making the same quality packing to my international customers. The, the only other thing I, I would advise is that you got to understand that when you're shipping to other countries, the packages could be opened uh, by customs and inspected, and I don't want to make it so hard that it's impossible for them to open, but yet I want it to be secure. So you want to you want to make sure that you have uh, adequate packing in there so that if it does get open, that they can reseal it up and ship it on to the uh, to the buyer. So just uh, just keep it in mind that it may be opened twice, once by customs and once by the customer. So uh, but most things that are inexpensive, like like Jason said, in a poly mailer, tighten it up and it's on its way and it's really good. Uh, poly mailers have really helped uh, streamline my shipping methods, uh, the, the way things get shipped to a buyer, um, and they open it up. You don't have to be so fancy. I mean, not everybody's looking. They're not looking for uh, you know gift wrapping uh, from Macy's. What they're looking for is their item and to, for it to arrive to them safely. So just just be aware that it, it may be in harsh elements if you're shipping to you know countries that have a lot of tropical rain. If you're shipping to you know high temperature countries, 
just keep those things in mind that maybe you need to protect the item. You know, chocolate going to uh, servicemen, uh, you know, over in Afghanistan might uh, uh, might require a little bit better uh, packing uh, to protect it from the elements. So, you know, th those types of things we want to keep in mind. Yeah, I know I used to, when I used to ship over to my son in Iraq, I had to take care of, make sure that if Steph was going to spoil, I had to pack it very special so it would stay in one piece. Um, okay, next question, and this is something that I've been asked a couple of times. Do you have a list of items that are prohibited by country? A lot of countries prohibit used clothing, etc. So is there a place in stamps.com or other places where we can find out exactly what is prohibited by country? Absolutely, Karen. So in stamps.com, when you put in your address in the international tab, um, the country restrictions for that particular country will automatically pop up. Um, it's, gonna, it's a list. It will tell you the prohibited items first, which means you cannot ship at all. And then it will go into the restricted items, where sometimes you can ship them. Usually you have to have some form of permit or something like that that's required. So whatever address you have inside stamps.com, um, the restricted items list will pop up automatically. You don't need to do anything else. It will be right there on the screen. You can view it. Also, I believe eBay shipping has something similar. I think they, it goes to a, a page that kind of lists everything in a big summary. Um, and also USPS. If you used to do a Google search for USPS restricted international items, um, they also have a website um, that has a big laundry list of items. And it's interesting to point out those restricted items do change. Um, you know, back when uh, when there was some bird flu going around, and um, a lot of countries uh, stopped, uh, rest started restricting um, uh, bird or uh, animal-based items that would include birds and things like that, um, like feathers and that type of stuff. So they do change, not a lot, but you can see some items. Uh, you know, usually due to uh, to health concerns. Um, can get added there. So it's always important to take a look at it. You know, you may, uh, may not have to look at it on a weekly basis, but maybe every month just to see if something slipped in there. Okay. And, uh, you know, and somebody was asking how do we, after we've sold it, it's too late to know that. Um, I think, um, Brian and Jason, have you ever run into somebody from a country that buys something like a used T-shirt that can't be shipped to? How do you handle that? I've never had that happen. <laughs> I've seen it where they say, you know, they buy uh, something and it's like, I've can't had, ship there. I've ahead, had uh, somebody in Italy buy, buy a pair of boots for me, and you can't sell leather, uh, shoes especially, but leather you, you can't ship to Italy, at least you couldn't. And uh, they actually had me ship it to their cousin in a bordering country, so, <laughs> which worked out fine. So, I mean, people are ingenious. And I think what you're going to see over the next decade as we become a even smaller world through commerce that uh, countries will start lifting restrictions on things that uh, uh, may be outdated. I mean their original reasons for having them may have been valid but times have changed and uh, it's a new century and uh, I think you'll see that uh, a lot of things will open up. Um, but uh, if you know right, if you know ahead of time that a certain item you're listing is not going to be able to be shipped to China, that's when you can use the exclusion on that listing to exclude China. You don't have to, you don't have to exclude uh, every listing if, if depending upon the items you're listing. And if you if you have a niche, you should learn. What countries don't uh, don't accept the certain items? But uh, overall, I don't have exclusions other than maybe Italy for uh, uh, for shoes or something. Shoes. Yeah. yeah. Hey, yeah. One, one, one. Sorry, Karen. Well, I was just going to say, and I know Italy because I've had some that um, not Italy. Well, Canada, some places can't ship books to, which is interesting. I know that the dreaded Amazon can't ship books to um, Canada. Is that all, everything, or is that just Amazon, Eric? I'm sorry, uh, Karen, what was that question again? Shipping books to Canada. Canada. I know Amazon, you can't. Uh, I believe you should be able to, I think that might just be an Amazon issue. Um, I believe okay. you can, I don't think that's a restricted item. It was the strangest thing ever. But I know I've had stuff that, you know, like jewelry items, and it has to be, you can't sell fine jewelry, but you can sell fashion 
a lot of countries have limits on those types of things too. Yeah, the, the the risks are, oh, go ahead. I just wanted to add something kind of along the same lines of the uh, restrictions. I have a customer from France who bought two items from me at separate times in the last year, and I gave him such quality service. He has found two U.S. sellers that won't ship internationally, so guess what? He bought them, they're shipping to me, and then he's going to pay me the shipping plus a, a fee for my time to ship them to him. So once you establish yourself as a good quality international seller, these kind of bonus things might come along someday. Exactly. And I mean, people are appreciative. It's the same thing with buyers that won't sell, ship to, you know, anything to Alaska and Hawaii or charge higher. And like Eric put in the questions, you know, a lot of U.S. protectorates, territories, and the outlying states are the same price unless you're still shipping ground. That would be me who put that in the question. Aha. Uh -huh. See, I didn't see who we answered it. I'm sorry. Yeah, people, I, I, back in the old days, it used to be different, but Canada, um, Canada. Hawaii and Alaska, they're the same as if you're shipping to Chicago. Or Puerto moment. Rico. Puerto Rico, Guam. So don't exclude those. Not that you have tons of customers. There's not a lot of people who live in Can uh, Alaska. But uh, I sell a lot of Hawaiian shirts to Hawaii. So I don't want to exclude yeah. those customers. I've had to send some out to Saipan. I don't even know where you know, it is. You know what's interesting about Alaska and Hawaii is that's really a, a UPS and FedEx um, issue. They, they have much higher prices to ship to those locations. You know, as Jason just said, U.S. Postal Service is the same price if it's going to Chicago, Texas, Florida, or Hawaii, or Alaska, or or their territory. So, um, you know, if you're shipping with the U.S. Postal Service, definitely open up to those those states. They they want our products, and, and I mean, heck, they're a state too, so <laughs> they, exactly. they deserve everything we have. I mean, the prices are more if you're shipping uh, priority and not using flat rate boxes. So you may, you know, if I'm here in in uh, Vegas and I'm shipping to Dallas, Texas in a priority box, it may cost me more to ship it to Alaska than to Dallas. But, um, you know, you got to, uh, uh, but for the most part, first class mail, it's the same thing. Uh, it's, it's the same everywhere. Flat rate envelopes, same thing. Flat rate priority box, it's the same thing. So ship everywhere. Um. Eric, this is a question for you. I got it twice, so I'm going to ask it. Stamps.com and the Mac. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So <laughs> we still we're we're not we don't have any plans on building software for the the Mac. Unfortunately, um, we're really trying to develop our web-based program. Um, our you know our batch profiles were import orders from Amazon, Etsy, eBay, everywhere else. Um, right now, it's currently on the software only. But uh, but I I mean I've had been able to test the new web-based version, um, the web-based batch version. It looks really really cool. It's working pretty darn good. I don't know. I doubt we will release it in Q4. Um, but I would say very early, very very early in 2014 it will be ready. So that and that is kind of our Mac version, our web-based version um, that will ha include batch will be our web-based version, and that will be the, what's available for Mac users. Okay. Um, this is a question, and Jason, you were talking about how you change the title with the customs form that your whole 80 character title doesn't need to go into it. So the person was asking, how do you change that title when it's printed on eBay? Pre so when you get to the point of shipping, that's one of the fields you can actually edit or alter. Uh, just like you have to add in the weight, obviously, that's a field that you can change. Sometimes eBay allows them to write too long of a address on one line, so you have to alter that field too. So all those, majority of those fields can be altered. So that's just one of them. So, you know, take out your 85 character uh, title and make it the title, just exactly what it is. Boil it down to what it is. You don't need all the frilly stuff. Okay. Yeah, see, I don't use eBay printing, so I wasn't sure how they did that. Um, one of the, the people is having a lot of problems with UK shipments not being delivered, and they've stopped shipping there. Do you have any suggestions? I've never well, what, had a problem with UK. Yeah, what, usually the UK is very smooth. Um, I mean, are we talking 10, 20 items that weren't delivered, or are we talking one or two? I don't know. $1,000 items, $10 items. It, it right. just, I've, I've never, ever had a problem with the UK other than slowness every once in a while. Right. Yeah, they they just said that they're having problems with that particular country. Yeah. Oh, they've lost seventy dollars. Okay. 
How much money did they make over the course of a year because they shipped to the UK and other countries? That's how you got to look at it. Seventy dollars is a is a drop in the bucket when you're 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 talking a hundred, two hundred, three hundred items that you might ship uh, overseas. If you just ship one item a day and you make a few extra dollars on it, that would more than cover the seventy dollar loss. Um, to me, that's not a not a lot. If you were talking seven hundred dollars, yeah, that hurts a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, what advice do you have for shipping expensive items anywhere from two hundred and fifty to a thousand dollars internationally? Uh, Express uh, mail is a great great way to do it where you're gonna get uh, some extra protection and signatures and all that. I mean that's that's what you want to do is uh, uh, if you're if you're in that stratosphere you're gonna to have to charge the customer accordingly and the customers know that if they want to get the item and it's an expensive item they're gonna to have to pay the extra fees for shipping um, you know everything's an acceptable risk and uh, you you sort of minimize that risk drastically by using uh, the Priority Express uh, version to uh, get it overseas um, so you just got to uh, use some common sense. One other thing I wanted to mention is that on first class mail there is a four pound limit that you can do shipping internationally. On priority it is 20 pound limit. So and then so, there may be some nuances if you're using flat rate boxes as to how much you can ship and so forth. But um, I remember one time shipping uh, 20 pounds of Legos to China and man boxing it up was quite a challenge getting it within the size and dimensions and the 20 pounds I had to do a lot of trimming and squeezing and but I got it done uh, so what one other thing you want to keep in mind when you're figuring out how much it costs to ship to another country, you must also take into consideration the box and packing material. So if you have a fragile item that you're going to have to double box and the item weighs one pound, two pounds may not be enough to calculate what it will cost to ship the item. So bear in mind, you know, boxes are part of what you're paying for when you're shipping things. You know, Brian, one thing I'd like to add, too, is some countries do have weight limit uh, restrictions. So, you know, maybe it's 20 pounds, maybe it's up to 70 pounds, um, but sometimes you may see 66 pounds or some, you know, variations of all that weight. Usually it only matters when it starts to get into heavier weights, but some countries do have those restrictions. So it's always important, you know, if you do have a particular product that's going to be a little bit heavier and not like kind of a norm, you know, under 10 pounds, um, make sure you look, look, take a look at those product restrictions and, and kind of uh, country restrictions because they will, uh, they do have some, you know, specs that, that need to be applied to. And then the other, is there a $400 limit on priority mail or can we ship higher dollar value with priority mail by providing additional forms and documentation? Um, I don't believe there's, I, I mean, I think the limit's in the thousands. I'm not familiar with a $400 limit. Um, okay. I'm, I think it's like $2,500 or, or something of that nature, or, may, or maybe even higher. Um, yeah, I think that, I think there may be a, li a value limit on, on first class mail international, but at that point, you know, it's in the hundreds, it, you know. If you're starting to ship an item that's a couple hundred dollars, you probably don't want to be using First Class Mail International anyway. Okay. Um, I think we're getting near time for all of us to move on. But um, one last question that I just wanted to ask is, somebody was saying that they always sent a packing slip with International, and should they still do so, do you think? Yes. Yeah, I do too. And the reason is, because as I mentioned before, how the item could get opened up, um, at least if you have it uh, attached to it somehow or with it somehow, if for some reason the package goes missing, they at least have that uh, packing slip that has the to and from uh, with the item, hopefully, that they can uh, repack it themselves at customs or whatever. So it just gives you a little bit of extra uh, assurance that 
uh, in case of separation that you might uh, still get it delivered. Yeah, and I would add too, it is a customs requirement with a lot of countries. So uh, is that a packing, well, what they would consider an invoice, um, usually a packing slip would, would suffice. Uh, but some type of documentation in there of what's supposed to be in that particular box. And so if in the event you were able to go to a country that did require that, which a good chunk of them do, certainly any of the more modernized postal organizations and countries, um, you know, you could potentially have your product delayed in customs or, or, you know, just maybe even stuck in customs for an extended period of time or forever um, by not including that packing slip. Um, you know, and or invoice. And as an example, FedEx and UPS International do require you to include an invoice um, in the packages. So, uh, so it's you know, it's always a good thing to include. Alrighty, Kat. I'm just we're scrolling through the the questions. They are still coming in. And as I remind everybody, we will do a Q&A document and get Brian and Jason and Eric to weigh in. So make sure you're on the newsletter and you'll get that. Uh, last words go to, uh, let's see, uh, Jason, you first. Last words to the audience before you go away. Sure. I want to thank everybody for tuning in and those of you who are listening later. Like I said, we will help uh, anyone for free at any of our groups, either Thrifting with the Boys or Shipping with the Boys uh, on Facebook or just come to our website. You can drop us an email, Brian and Jason uh, at thriftingwiththeboys.com. We're here to help. If we don't know the answer, uh, we can get Eric involved. If he doesn't know, we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll help you. We will help anybody that needs and wants help. Awesome. Thanks, Jason. Brian, any last words? Yeah, please come visit us at uh, thriftingwiththeboys.com or shippingwiththeboys.com. If you go to shippingwiththeboys.com, uh, I've got a little question there about uh, international shipping when it first began. So if ah. you've been hesitant about doing it, maybe this will get you to think about uh, how many years uh, international shipping has uh, been going on. So, Can I uh, guess on that? Sure. I'm guessing it was after the Pony Express. <laughs> you, you, you actually would be wrong. Oh, no. Yeah. It was before the Pony Express. That's pretty yeah. cool. Head yeah. on over so, to Shipping with the Boys, guys, and find out the actual answer. And, Thanks, uh, Brian. Thank you very much. Uh, join us on Twitter at, uh, at Thrifting Boys or at Shipping Boys and uh, – we're, uh, we've got a meetup in Las Vegas coming up at the end of the month, mm -hmm. and we do that every month. Uh, we've got Griff uh, this month, and I think, Eric, you, you're committed for next month, right, November? I, yes, November, I am. Awesome. I didn't mean to put you on the spot. But, uh, <laughs> that's a great plan, Brian. I like that. <laughs> but, uh, but that's one way to get them to commit. I but, like uh, yeah. that. That's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remember that method, Eric. Did you have any last words for the crowd, Eric, before you sign off? Uh, oh, no. I mean, obviously, I wanted to thank uh, Brian and Jason for, as always, putting on a great presentation. And, uh, and also, just to, to let everybody know, I mean, it's Q4. It's a great way to, uh, to increase your sales. Shipping overseas is not hard. As you do one or two documents or packages, you'll probably see this is really a simple process. So... Um, I really suggest everybody to look into it and try to do it right away. Uh, it could really be a great way to, to boost up your, your Q4 and make it a, a very happy Christmas. Excellent. And speaking of international, Jack says good night to all of us from the Philippines. So we had international listener <laughs> while we were talking. Thank you, Jack, for coming. Uh, again, make sure that you're on the newsletter, uh, pagemage.com forward slash top rate of seller webinars, and we'll get all that information out to you. I'll be working on the video, and we will have this up for you within 24 hours.